Nigel Farage is not usually a defender of the rights of people struggling to cross borders. But for Novak Djokovic, he's made an exception. I'm here in Belgrade, outside the Parliament building. I've been a guest of the Djokovic family last night and today. And of course, overnight, the judges said the rules under which he got into Australia were the right ones. He was released from detention. Hooray, everybody thought. But the sting in the tail is that the Australian immigration minister has the right to overrule the court. So arbitrary power could be used over the rule of law. That was Nigel Farage supporting unelected judges in overturning a democratically elected government's decision about who can enter their country. It is the opposite of everything he has ever fought for throughout his entire career. He was also outraged that a judge's ruling could be questioned. That's at odds with his 2012 call to sack Judge Peter Bowers. It doesn't take courage to burgle a home. It takes courage to do as his victim did and serve your country in Afghanistan. Sack the judge. Bowers had given... Uh, burglar a suspended sentence instead of sending him to prison. That's that's what Nigel Farage thought would be worth overriding the judiciary for and, and sacking a judge. The defence of judicial independence is also at odds with comments Farage made on the Supreme Court's 2016 decision that Parliament would need to vote on triggering, triggering sorry, Article 50. So do you think that when it comes to the Supreme Court, we shouldn't trust the Supreme Court not to be politically biased in this decision? Is that what you're saying? I, 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 I'm afraid... Uh, that the, the reach of the European Union into the upper echelons of society in this country uh, makes it quite difficult for us to trust the judgments. And it's not just Farage's belief about the correct powers of the judiciary that are being tested in the Djokovic case. He is also presumably reconsidering his beliefs regarding immigration laws. In 2016, Farage tweeted, Clear now for sake of our national security, as well as for social cohesion, that we must leave the EU and have Australian-style immigration system. So the man who can now be standing in the Belgrade snow decrying the Australian immigration system once wanted it introduced in Britain. Changed your mind, Nigel. Being serious now, even if Farage's vault fast is pure opportunism, Djokovic's plight should be used to shine a spotlight on Australia's draconian immigration system. It's often praised in Britain. For that, we don't need to go much further than the hotel Djokovic was detained in. The Carlton in Melbourne currently houses 33 refugees and asylum seekers transferred transferred, sorry, from the notorious Nehru Island Detention Centre, mostly on medical grounds. Some have been in the hotel for more than two years, and many in detention, many have been in detention for as long as 10 years. Mohammed Joy from Bangladesh is one of them. Mr. Jokobik, will you speak out for us when you are released to get on with your life? Will you tell, will you tell the world how we have been at the mercy of Australians' coral immigration system for 10 years? We can no longer breathe inside this torture place, torture center. I was brought to Australia for medical treatment in 2020. Since then, I have not been able to get any good treatment without Panadol. Mr. Morrison government, why are you keeping us in this torture center for almost two years for no crime? What is the reason? And still we have 34 innocent people in this park prison of torture center. <clears throat> I would like to tell you the Australian government, 10 years is enough. Please, enough is enough. Is there anyone can tell us who can give back our 10 years, our young life? My only request to the government of this beautiful country was freedom and safety. Today, we want justice from you for our 10 years. Please, we want support from you. We are all mentally ill. We are all physically ill because of this torture. So you heard there from, I mean, a real victim of Australia's immigration system. Ash, Djokovic's situation has apparently awoken Farage to the horrors of a, a brutal immigration system, a, a brutal border force. Do you think the penny might be dropping for anyone else? I wish I could say that this was a politicising moment at large, but 
I don't think it is. When you see some of the comments which were made to the press by Djokovic's family, they talked about the conditions of the hotel he was in as if migrants were on the same level as cockroaches. They were saying it's full of immigrants, it's you know, full of pests, it's horrible, the conditions are awful. Now, really, what that should have been is an opportunity to cast light on people who don't have the kind of access to media, to legal advice, people who are simply not as powerful or as wealthy as Novak Djokovic. And I think you said it right when you talked about the opportunism of Nigel Farage. This is a man who doesn't have any real beliefs or integrity, in my opinion. And the reason why he's so easily able to contradict his previously held positions is because right now he's a man without a cause. He used to be Mr. Brexit, but what is he now? And that's why I think he's trying to align himself with this kind of anti-authority, anti-vax, COVID skeptic lobby. It's simply because he sees an opportunity to amass a new set of followers. And that's all there is to it. Now, when it comes to the Australian government and the treatment of migrants, we've discussed this a few times on the show before, but for those who are unfamiliar, it is a particularly brutal, unjust and inefficient system. So you have people being detained on average for around two years, going up to 10 years. You have offshore detention where you have minors, asylum seekers, vulnerable people, victims of torture, victims of sexual abuse being held in almost prison camp conditions, being restricted from accessing necessary medical treatments. You have very high rates of self-harm, attempted suicide and suicide. You also have such a hardline anti-immigration policy that there have been reports of the Australian government um, coordinating with people traffickers in order to turn back the boats. There were news stories about uh, these people traffickers being paid to turn back the boats containing asylum seekers. So it is a uniquely brutal an unjust system. And it's all about playing to essentially nativist nationalist politics. It is ugly. It is unjust. And there really, there really aren't words strong enough to condemn how Australia manages its borders. 